Yes, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman, Alfred. I'm Batman. I am Batman! I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Vengeance. Greetings, Bat Family, and welcome back to Holy Batcast, brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. Make sure you visit holybatcast.com or follow us all over social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for Holy Batcast and you will find us. If you love the show, you want to help support us, you can do that on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash holybatcast. We are part of the Real Fans Podcast Network, so if you're looking for other shows to enjoy, you can check those out at rf4rm.com. And as always, I'm your host, Andy DiGenova. If you'd like to follow me, you can do that on Twitter or on Instagram. It's just my name, Andy DiGenova. This episode, it was this was a request, a request from one of our listeners, a celebration of the 20th anniversary of Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. We did talk about this movie way back when in the early days of the podcast, but it's 20 years, and so we're going to record a commentary. And I've got two very special guests joining me for that, neither of them are Brendan or Jamie. Uh, Brendan uh, was busy all week, and plus, do we really want to hear him talk about Batman Beyond? We don't. We all know we don't. (laughs) Uh, And then Jamie is still on his hiatus, so I have two special guests uh, joining me, and I'm very excited about it. So the first guest here I have is uh, someone who you've heard him on the show before. He's a good friend of the show, and he has made it very clear in the past that whenever we talk Batman Beyond... He wants in. He loves the show. He's the anti-Brendan. So uh, now I'm calling his bluff. He's he's back. Uh, please welcome uh, Mr. Kevin Carrickman. Hey, Kevin. Hey, man. How's it going? Thanks so much for having me. It was very shway of you. Yeah, hey, nice. I like it. Uh, well, good to have you. Uh, and... I don't know if you heard, you got a little shout out, I think, on the last episode. Someone wrote in and said, in case Kevin Carrickman is on. Oh, no, I didn't hear. I'll have to check that out. There you go. Go back and check that out. But uh, also joining us uh, is someone who I've been wanting to get back on the show. It's been a while, um, but she makes the rounds. You'll see her pop up in many uh, podcasts in our little community here. She has her own (laughs) called I Love That Movie, but it is Lisa Sanchello. Hey, Lisa. Hey, thank you for having me on. I'm excited to talk about this film and... uh... Yeah, any any chance to talk about anything Batman related, I'm there. I love it. I mean, yes, yeah, I, I kind of think of you as Batgirl. Like if I picture you, <laughs> I pretty much just picture you as Batgirl these days, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> it's funny to me. It's like I wear that suit very rarely, but yeah, a lot of my pictures on social media are me in that suit. So it probably gives the impression I'm always in it, which <laughs> is a better reality, I think. But yeah, <laughs> it's Nothing wrong it's. With it. It's true when you cosplay. If you have if you have one costume that sticks out to people, it tends to uh, stick in their minds a lot. <laughs> yeah, then they see the real me and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, just, just a normal t-shirt. person." Disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, no, thank you both. I'm so glad that you made the time to join me uh, because, and what's fun is I think we kind of got different ends of the spectrum here because we've got Kevin, who's like a huge Batman Beyond enthusiast. And then when I talk to you, Lisa, you go, you know, I've been meaning to see that movie and I never have. Yeah, so- I actually watched it last night just because I wanted to see it like with sound and everything sure, and then be prepared for the track. But it, it's one that's been on my list and I've never gotten around to. So that's exciting. I'm like, I'm, I'm really, it'll be cool to get the different perspectives. Um, and then also this way, like, if and when Brendan and Jamie ever want to do this sometime in the future, we can always do it again. So, you know, you I'm, I am not ashamed to take multiple bites of the same apple. That's fine with me. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. One of, one of the first things I watched when I downloaded the uh, HBO Max app when it went live with all the DC stuff was this movie. So I really just watched it like a month or so ago. Nice. Um, I got to say, I haven't watched it for a few years. So it was fun to revisit it. And again, thank you to uh, whoever wrote in saying, hey, you guys should do something for the 20th. And I was like, oh, my God, you're right. It is 20 years old. So it was released Crazy. on December 12th of 2000, which was just a couple. Wow. Yeah. So we're just a couple days off from the actual anniversary. <laughs> but hey, close enough. We're in the week. That's good enough. Um, so I won't, yeah. say how, I won't say how old I was to make anyone feel bad. 
Mm-hmm. I was already an adult, so shush. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I think, in high school. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, to be fair, I wasn't that far out of high school. Not that far. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, so 20 years old. And yeah, I was like, well, great. We can do that, a little commentary and get some some of the old friends back on. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So for those at home listening, we're going to follow along because, you know, wherever we might be watching it might be a little different. I think what we're going to do is we're going to get the movie uh, queued up and watch the little WB logo with Bugs Bunny. So adorable. So that's what I'm doing right now. I got I hit play and it says... WB Family Entertainment, Bugs Bunny popped up, he eats his carrot, and then it fades to black, and then pause. So as soon as Bugs Bunny eats his carrot, and it fades to black, pause. That's where I'm at. So for me, that's 11 seconds, but I'm watching it on iTunes. Again, everybody's watching it. Maybe some of you watching it on physical media, maybe on DC Universe. I don't know. Um, so I thought that was a good safe spot. I also, I guess it's worth saying that this is the PG-13 version but I believe that only the PG-13 version is what's available anymore. I feel like the censored version came and went, and now you don't really see that one anymore. Yeah, it's it's funny. For the longest time, it was uh, it was always like, you know, oh, which one am I actually watching? But yeah, you're right, because I have it off Amazon Prime, and I, when I read on it. When I went to get it, I was like, oh, crap, I got to make sure that this is the right version. So, like, pretty early on, as soon as a punch fully connects, you're like, okay, I got the right version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of differences. Absolutely. All right. So let's do it. You guys queued up where, yes. where I said fade to black? Yep. And we'll just start and we'll celebrate 20 years of Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. So if everybody at home is queued up, Lisa, Kevin, you're queued up. I'm queued up. We're going to hit play in three, two, one, play. There we go. And now we've got beautiful future Gotham City, which I, might not even be future anymore. At this point, it might be present Gotham City. <laughs> right. And uh, I mentioned it earlier before we started recording. It's also very appropriate that they were doing this right after Cyberpunk released because yeah. this series definitely has a big influence from that genre, which is one of the many reasons I love it. I'm not super familiar with Cyberpunk, so I'm just going to take your word for it and believe you. <laughs> One thing I one thing I didn't know while watching this before is uh, according to Amazon that guard is Bruce Tim. Ah, that would not surprise me because usually Bruce Tim and Paul Dini like to to do quick little cameos of the, the you know in the movies and the show and everything. And yeah. I like that we do start with just a cold open heist of this new <clears> gang <throat> uh, stealing stuff. And I gotta say, you know, we've we've been reviewing Batman Beyond on the on the show for a while now. And one of my biggest uh, complaints, for lack of a better term, is just that the, the rogues gallery is just not as good. Um, but I'll say that this gang in this movie is great. Like, I think these are some of the strongest original villains that they've ever created for the Batman Beyond universe. I think they're all awesome. Oh, yeah. Once we get to this point, and this is like the core group of Jokers for sure. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. Um, I also love how, and you know, you probably wouldn't be watching this movie if you aren't weren't already familiar with Batman Beyond, but I feel like even if you weren't, this is such a great introduction to like the setting and Terry and you get his personality just like right off the bat. Mm -hmm. I agree because I'm actually not super familiar with Batman Beyond. I've seen a couple episodes here and there, but I've never really like gotten into into it so as somebody that's kind of on the outside i i agree with that a lot like it, it it's good um standalone you don't have to like have watched the whole show you're not lost watching it mm -hmm. that's good yeah and one, especially if you're familiar with batman the animated series because this right. this is really you know one of those batman beyond stories that is so strongly rooted in the animated series which of course we'll get to uh, about halfway through the movie but i mean i think that helps too so as long as you kind of know the the basics you're pretty good even this this gang that i like so much like they're all original characters but they evoke certain classic characters obviously like Dee Dee sure. the twins evoke harley quinn even though they're not her um mm -hmm. 
you know, Ghoul uh, evokes the Scarecrow, even though he's not the Scarecrow. So it's like they I think they did a nice job of taking tried and true tropes and reinventing them and still creating something new. For sure. And I, I know that you said that you, um, you aren't you aren't a fan as much of the other like rogues gallery, but um, I am. And I do feel that they did that with a lot of the other original care, original villains they made for the show as well. Like with Ink and um, Spellbinder and Blight, I feel like they also, you know, harken back to uh, certain villain archetypes from from earlier in the series, which I like. Mm-hmm. I really like these little speeders that they're flying around in. It made me nostalgic. I mean, just the animation style because it's um, TMS, which is like one of the oldest anime studios in Japan. They did like Lupin the Third and Rose of Versailles and Detective Conan, but also, Inspector Gadget, The Real Ghostbusters, Rainbow Bright. So it's like an animation mm-hmm. studio we saw like kind of a lot growing up. Wow. Yeah, for I sure. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Um, I also I noticed as I was rewatching this, the the animation in this is is really stellar. Like it holds up great. I think if and when they remastered it, they did a wonderful job because I was really impressed with the quality of the animation in this whole movie. Uh just the way they move, the, the the cleanliness of the lines, the colors, like it looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like these big shots where they're high up in the city, you really get that sense of scale for how big and high up everything in Neo Gotham is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very yeah. Blade Runner esque. <laughs> totally. Yep, for sure. Well, and I think they did a very nice job of expanding the scope of this story to make it feel more like a movie. And and I think it does like the story does feel bigger. The scope feels bigger. And even this, this initial action sequence is exciting and it's fun, but it just, it, it just feels a little more cinematic, which I think is awesome. For sure. It, it doesn't just feel like a long episode. Right. Right. Exactly. It's challenging to do. And then, of course, uh, Henry Rollins is the voice of Bonk, who's also Mad Stan in the show. Yeah, yeah. I like that <laughs> they they were able to include him. And then did you see who the voice of Dee Dee was? Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, Melissa Joan Hart. I couldn't which, believe that. I was like, yay. I think that's so fun. And honestly, I, I've seen this movie multiple times, but I always somehow forget that. And I, you know, I look it up because, uh, again, like I love these. I love this gang. And so I, I was just trying to remind myself of all their names. And I was like, oh, gosh, that's right. That was Melissa Joan Hart, which is so fun. Yeah, it's great that they got her to voice both of them. Cause mm-hmm. They're twins. Yeah. Yeah. And then also kind of a cool way to set off the story is that uh, Terry doesn't stop them. They get away. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which which I think is nice. And even that camera move that just happened kind of around Terry as he was sitting on that ledge was like really well done and impressive. And you go, okay, like they were, you know, they did invest, I think, some extra funds in this to make it look like a movie. Absolutely. even though we've got the sound down, because of course we do commentary, um, I can hear this theme music even with the sound <laughs> down because it's oh, I know course. it so well. Um, to me, it's iconic. It's to me, it's it's just as iconic as the 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 series theme. Um, I have this soundtrack, and so yeah, I can just hear the <laughs> meow. You know, like it's it's that slow <laughs> jam there, but dun dun. Very two thousands. Yes, <laughs> definitely. And one thing I also like is, you know, where where it starts off in the movie is that um, it's clear it's it's this uh, Terry's been established as Batman for a little while. He's not just starting out like he was in the beginning of the show. So I, I kind of like that they uh, that they do that. You know, he's a little mm-hmm. more confident. He's a little more cocky. Yeah. Well, in his first line too, or that line right before it played to the intro where he's like, that's not coming out of my allowance. I think that's you know, giving us an idea of what his personality is like, even if he haven't been watching the show. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because one of the things about Terry that uh, that especially a lot of people of my generation really stuck to that he is very Spider-Man-esque. He likes to quip. He likes to make jokes, which is obviously something Bruce didn't do. So it's a nice uh, difference between the two characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And... um Oh gosh, I just just lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> something about and, something about and, Terry. I don't know. Um, and also something you don't see at the beginning of movies anymore: credits. 
Yeah, <laughs> which I love. I've always kind of been a fan of that. For, again, for me, it's like the overture before a show, you know, the credits, the music. It just kind of allows you to settle in. Uh, script by the amazing Paul Dini. Not shocking, considering mm-hmm. how good it is. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, and you get like a peek into who the talent is, too, which I feel mm-hmm. like sometimes you watch a whole movie and you have to go look it up. This time the names are kind of front and center. Right. Mm-hmm. And can, can can I just say for a moment how much I love old Bruce in this show? <laughs> you can. He's so damn cool. <laughs> yeah, he's he's awesome. And this is like such a great introduction for him. Like you said, this, you know, they're, they're not assuming everybody already watches the show, so they give you just enough to go, okay, here's where everything is to really set the table. And yeah, that intro for old Bruce in the Batcave throwing a battering for old time's <laughs> sake is mm-hmm. just is perfect. And then we've got Ace the Bat Hound, and this movie really lets Ace the Bat Hound shine. Aww. He's a featured player in this. Yeah, which is great, because it's, even in the series, like the episodes where they really used Ace a lot were always great. Yeah. Good bad um, dog. That's what I was going to say that when I completely my brain farted uh, was this took place in between season one and season two. So you're right. It was oh, okay. it's a nice entry point where Terry is more confident. He's he knows what he's doing, but he still doesn't have it all figured out. So it was like a, a good entry point for where the story was going to take place. Um, and then we've got this guy whose who name I, I forgot. <laughs> Who I'm surprised they didn't name Red Herring. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, oh, okay, I get what's and, going on And here. it's so smart, though, to like make Hart, Mark Hamill do his voice, too. Because, yeah, then we were all watching this. And when this came out in 2000, we were all like, how did the Joker come back? What you know? Because that's really the mystery at the heart of it. And so as soon as that guy shows up, you go, oh, OK, great. He's the Joker. OK. Got and it. I love <laughs> I love that it happens so early. And then, of course, that's not the case. I thought that was... You know, they were really having fun with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is something they didn't do a lot, especially when something aimed towards a younger audience. Mm-hmm. Which is something I felt all the, all the DC animated shows always did. They never treated their young audience like they were idiots. Right. Yeah. Which is something I feel, um, unfortunately, I feel happens too much in modern kids animation. Well, I think it's shocking when you see like the violence and and the you know I guess darker storytelling style of the '90s and early 2000s. It's it's a pretty big difference between the stuff mm-hmm. today, for sure. And uh, now that I'm older, whenever I see this club in the series, because they use the same club all the time, I always think of the hip <laughs> joint from Futurama. Yes. Oh my God, you're so right. <laughs> and I love the like the five story tall lava lamp. That's pretty. Of rad. course. <laughs> But this is like a teenager club. They're they're high schoolers going to this club. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and you get to see, you get to, and even in the regular series, you get to see the lives of these characters outside of just like school or just Batman for Terry, yeah. which is a nice well, touch. Well, and funny that you mentioned the hip joint because Dana, Terry's girlfriend, you know who voices her. <laughs> I, I forgot. I feel like I should know this. It's okay, it's Lauren Tom who also does Amy Wong on Futurama. Oh my god, that makes oh. so much sense. <laughs> so, so Terry is dating Amy Wong now. You know, <laughs> Spleesh. <laughs> and, and much like this show, they have nonsense slang words on Futurama. Oh my god, we're connecting so many dots. I love it. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I love when I love when they do that in like future shows, like Frack in a uh, Battlestar. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, they mentioned Woof, who's the hyena, uh, and I love that that's a callback to a season one episode where the kids were splicing their DNA with animals. And Terry mm-hmm. even said, oh, the, the gang is getting into splicing because there's a hyena. And I'm like, oh, that's like a nice little connection that, you know, if you would seen the show, makes sense. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's Fred Tatashore, because anytime you need a character to growl or make animal noises, you hire him. So we get this reveal of the Joker right away. I love the way they keep his face in shadow and his eyes glow red. I think that's so cool. For sure. And and at this early point, you know, you're you're still not entirely sure if it's really the Joker. Yeah. Right. Well, and and even they're not sure. I like exactly. I like that they write that into the story of like even his gang is like we still don't know who you are. 
Like you say you're the Joker, we're not so sure. So again, like really building that mystery from the very beginning, which I think is is cool. Mm hmm. And I also really like the redesign of the Joker, like the Batman Beyond Joker, where he's he he's traditional enough, uh, but it's more of the you know the purple bodysuit more than a an actual suit, and mm-hmm. the hair is a little more slicked back. So I think it's it's a nice new look, but it's not too far off base. Yeah, he looks kind of Hannibal Lecter ish. Yeah, definitely. Totally. I definitely ha- like better how he looks here than the redesign in the in the. New adventures. Oh, yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. And he sounds, like, younger somehow. Like, I think that's another thing, too, where you're, like, not sure if it's him because he doesn't sound 100% like his old self. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's the same voice actor, but... (laughs) Right. (laughs) For the show. But you're right. Like, he looks just a little different. He sounds just a little different, and so it makes the characters and us, the viewer, go, like, what's going on here? What's the deal? Mm Mm-hmm. And then I just want to point out that um, obviously the uncut version is superior, but there's a couple of things that I do feel are a little better in the edited version. And right there, I think when they kill Bonk in the edited version, he shoots him with Joker gas. And when he's laying on the table, he's like twitching and convulsing with the, you know, the the big rictus grin on his (laughs) face. And I don't know. I feel like that's a little creepier than just getting shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's setting up to what happens later with that gun, right? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Like the gun yeah. works so much better because of how it factors in later. And then for everyone wondering, yes, Ghoul is just doing a Christopher Walken impression. <laughs> I, I mean, it should surprise no one, but I love Ghoul. I want more of Ghoul just because I mm-hmm. love his design because he's like Mr. Yes. Halloween. I'm so into it. Absolutely. And that's Michael Rosenbaum, who is the Flash in Justice League. Yep. And Lex Luthor in Smallville. There you go. That's, that's how I remember him. <laughs> <laughs> he has multiple DC touch points, which we he respect. Does. So I didn't realize in the show that Bruce Wayne is like 80, they, I think they say, in the movie. Don't they reference uh, his age at one point? I, they do. He's at least in his 80s. I think he's wow. even older than 80. Because I was actually trying to work it out. I was trying to work <laughs> out the timeline as I was watching it. Because <laughs> at a certain point, they say, like, the flashback that happens is 40 years prior. And I'm like, well. Oh, okay. If. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, okay, 80 works. Like, he could have been 40 when that happened. And now he's 80. Yeah, that so works. Yeah, especially if you think like, you know, about 10 years later is when he gave up being Batman. He would have been around 50. Mm, that, that, that makes yeah. sense, considering yeah. how he looked at like the intro of the first episode. Sure. Right. And old man Bruce is such a badass. I love that what's about <laughs> to happen where he just takes out Woof without without a, like an 80 year old Bruce. Still not someone to be trifled with. Mm-hmm. Not phased in the slightest. Nope. I so do it's like just cool as a cucumber. The mm-hmm. new team, like, I feel like they their attacks are a little bit different than the old show. Like, they call back to the old show, but I like that little ball thing that they threw. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know, they think there's, like, little touches here and there that let you know once again that we're in the future. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. The moment where Bruce just looks at Terry and says, go to work, that's yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, Bruce, Bruce knocks out Wolf, and he's like, better mascots than you have tried. Grand dramatic entrance. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was pretty clever that, like, you know, Batman Beyond, they they did try to bring in some of the classic rogues gallery wherever it made sense. And so it made a lot of sense for them to hold off on the Joker. They, You know, the Joker still has influence in the future, but he's not around. So to use the Joker and his return as the hook for the first Batman Beyond movie, I thought was also just really smart because... You know, what event would be big enough to need a movie? And it that would be Return of the Joker. And I like how they establish the difference between, um, like, Bruce does, doesn't care about Wolf. He's not even phased. But he sees the Joker, and he's visibly shaken. Yeah. 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 I also like the Joker uh, gives a, a quick little fashion review of Batman's <laughs> new look, which I mm-hmm. think is great when he's like, ears are too long, I missed the cape, but it's not bad, and I, I agree with the Joker. That's where I, that's about how I feel. <laughs> I was just going like, to say... Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say, he calls him Batfink the whole time. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I almost feel like his little comment there was like a joke at all the people who uh, complained when the show first came out about Terry's design. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love this Joker car too, that it's like a clown eating a candy bar. Like what a, what a cool and ridiculous Joker car. I love it. Exactly. Cause that is what he would drive in the future. Of course. Well, and the fact yeah. that their hideout is an abandoned candy factory, it, it mm -hmm. harkens back to that. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I love that in Neo Gotham, there's still so many abandoned X factories. I was going to say they should just not have candy factories, carnivals. Like they need to just, put a ban on that stuff because it's going to become a joker layer. Stop. Yeah, stop giving the joker <laughs> abandoned places to hole up. Yeah. Yeah. Or just any abandoned factory that is fits with the theme of one of their villains. It's like, yeah. maybe we should get rid of this abandoned uh, kitty litter factory. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a giant clown face on the front. Yeah. Take that. Odds down. are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he says that I let them go to save those people. Well, yeah, you should do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that moment, though, where like Terry's like, oh, I let him go. And Bruce is like, no, you did the right thing. That's that's what you should have done. Yeah. I also this is one of my favorite scenes where he goes clone robot suspended animation, where he's <laughs> essentially throwing out all the theories that we as the viewer would have. Yeah. And all sort the of, cliches. Yeah. And we're dispensing with those right away of like because that's when you hear, oh, Joker's going to come back, those are all the things you would have thought. And right. so this is this is the filmmakers going, this is what you think, it's none of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and credit where credit's due, especially like when you first watch it, especially when you're younger, it's like, well, I didn't see that coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We'll get there when we get there. Oh, exactly. We're, and it's almost like they challenged themselves to come up with something more creative than those cliches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were they were very aware. They actually tried to make a decent mystery. I love Barbara being Commissioner Gordon now. Mm -hmm. She's awesome. And yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's such a nice forever. touch. I like her but, design too. Yeah. Here though, I think her voice is different. I want to say in the show it was Stocker Channing, and here it's Angie Harmon. So for whatever reason. That changed. I guess maybe star power kind of, you know, cameos and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, I also like how how dismissive Terry is of the Joker, where he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I'm sure he was a big deal, but psh, whatever. He's a clown. And mm -hmm. the way she puts him in the place right here where, yeah, the Joker was unlike anyone you've ever faced. And I hope you never have to. Uh, and then, you know, like I, I just I just love how how terrified everyone is of the Joker, mm -hmm. even though they don't even know if this is the real one. Every, it, it just kind of throws them all for a loop. Yeah. And as, as a younger guy, you know, this far removed from the events of the original series, that is how somebody in that time period would ask that would, would act. They'd be like, Oh yeah. Whoopi cushions, big deal. You know, whatever. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, Joy buzzer. Yeah. Joker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as scared of his mustache under makeup. <laughs> so I get I think Sorry. that this um this clip, yeah, the the clip is from Holiday Nights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just gonna bring that up. Yeah, which is now it's it's appropriate season to to revisit that mm -hmm. classic episode. Yeah, I feel same like should just oh, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I was gonna say same audio, but they reanimated that scene. Yeah, yeah, with the the adjusted design, which I love so much better. I love that that technology, I feel like that would be an app on your phone, but you know, yeah, <laughs> it's in the back. <laughs> <of you. laughs> and it, you know what? It probably still is, but Bruce just refuses to use it and he just keeps it on the big computer. That, that checks out. I agree. <laughs> it's way cooler blown up on the computer. <laughs> he also can't see super well anymore. Probably. Right. That's true, too. <laughs> He's got to have it blown up. You killed him, didn't you? I like that part because yeah. I, I, you know, I was watching it for the first time and I didn't know. You know, yeah. I was like, there's obviously some big thing that happened with the Joker. What happened? Did did Bruce kill him? Uh, I don't know. I like that kind of mystery for some of the movie. Yeah, it's great. Because, yeah, it's like 
what happened? What, yeah, what happened to the Joker? What was the last Joker story? And I like this too, where, where Bruce is like, you've done a great job, but guess what? We're done. You know? Yeah. Like he's he's so scared that it's Mm -hmm. like, sorry, Terry, no more. He does the whole push him away thing. Yeah. I feel like he does at one point with all the Robins (laughs) Mm -hmm. or I know he's not Robin, but yeah. And and as we find out later, he has he has every reason to feel that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is a great scene between the two of them. And again, it's like this is really you know it's something that's always there under the surface on the show. But when you do a movie, this is where you get to pull it out out front and really have these conversations where you know to see where they are and why they do what they do. Mm-hmm. So what what is Terry referencing here? Like he keeps saying like oh I did all these awful things. Like what did he do? Do they ever touch on that? That's the thing. They never – in the show, they always acknowledge that he was like a troublemaker. But in, in the, this – that scene right there is the first time that they acknowledge that may, maybe it's a little deeper than that. Mm, like he okay. did run with a bad crowd. And in the show, they never really get into it. But I do appreciate that they put that in there. Like it's more than, you know, oh, I played hooky and, you know – I was like, know, what bad stuff can this kid – what could he have done? He's so young. <laughs> but, well, that's you just know, it. Is I don't think really he ever bad. did anything that bad. I think – yeah, I mean he was kind of a troublemaker but never like a criminal. You know, he never killed anyone. <laughs> one yeah so i do i do feel like they they exaggerated a bit for the drama of that scene but it's like mm-hmm. terry you were always pretty much a good guy you've you know everyone's made mistakes but yeah i always think like he he was right on the edge and if bruce hadn't intervened in his life he would have gone down that bad path like he might have ended up a joker or something mm-hmm and then an accurate uh representation of a uh brotherly relationship mm-hmm. just yeah. constantly giving each other crap <laughs> i've always liked terry's family so i'm glad they find time to at least have them a little bit in here definitely i, I like his brother i like his mom yeah <laughs> and back to the club yeah hey. clubbing every night <laughs> Can totally relate when we were when we were teenagers right guys right right uh sure <laughs> come on <laughs> those girls i thought they were going to be you know the the twins later uh, just because i haven't seen the show mm-hmm. yeah yeah and uh this this scene always kind of reminds me of um in Spider-Man 2, when Peter gives up being Spider-Man and they have the whole, you know, raindrops falling on my head scene. And it's like, oh, I can do all these things now that I'm not doing the superhero stuff. <laughs> it doesn't last long, though, which I, I do like. I like that he and Bruce essentially break up. Um, and he's he was OK with that. He was willing to accept that. And the fact that the reason he can't is because they come right after him in his, uh, you know, in his secret identity is like, Mm -hmm. it's like he, it's not him like not being able to let it go. He's like, no, fine. Great. I'll spend time with my girlfriend. And it's the bad guys who are like, no, not so fast. Yeah. You're not getting away that easy. Yeah. Uh Oh, I know. Don't worry. He's okay. The animated dog is okay. <laughs> exactly. And he's going to get his revenge later in the movie. I love that little, I love the little purple palette with the green yes. smile. It's so perfect. Mm-hmm. And like, and, yeah, he was, he was already getting the antitoxin ready. Yeah. Which is great. Like he's like the Joker's in town. I need that. I need that antidote for Joker gas. <laughs> It's just a reflex at this point. But I like that the looks- Joker wastes no time. He's just like, yeah, yeah I'm just I'm just going to hang out in the bat, uh, bat cave. Yeah. It's like, hey, we got 80 minutes. OK, we got to get this moving along. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's it's. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say I, I would uh, proving once again, don't don't date a superhero. You're just going to be kidnapped. Poor girl. Exactly. Oh, of just, <laughs> like, just date guys who love superheroes. Right, right. See, right. Miserable, miserable existence. <laughs> <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, that that scene with uh, Bruce is it's so full of menace, and it's like it really makes you think, oh God, what's gonna happen? Because he's old, you know, and yeah. Joker's still clearly young. It's like, oh God, <laughs> you know, you yeah. actually feel like you don't know. I mean, obviously, it's an animated thing, but especially when you're younger, like, oh man, what's gonna happen? <laughs> well, especially, I mean, they they killed Bonk earlier. Like, this is a yeah. movie. If they're gonna make a big swing like that, it's gonna be in a movie. Dang, that would um, killed her. <laughs> And God, how tall is that? Is that club building? It's like three yeah. stories high. She so. hit that light pretty hard. See, I, I like this with the laser guns because it's kind of like, oh, by the way, you're in the future still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do think that they should have broken that lava lamp and then surfed out of there. I think it's a missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> a little escape from L.A. in the end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love, love it. And like even even out of suit, Terry still kicks ass. Yeah. And you're right. Like uh, I I saw the uncut version first because my brother-in-law, who loved Batman Beyond, he got a copy of the uncut version before it got released somehow. Um, way back in the early days of piracy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we watched the cut version and it was funny how like, yeah, every punch that connects, they would like cut away. So yeah, the like, screen would flash white. Yeah. Like all the punches would be there. Oh, there we go. There we go. Lava <laughs> lamp. All no right. surfboard though. No surfboard, but Hey, I'll, I'll take it. Still water slide. Still a little Goonies action. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that kind of, that kind of cut away and tricks like that. They did that all the time in 90 shows like the, uh, yeah. The, the 90s Spider-Man show was infamous for that. Like, I don't I don't think in that entire series he ever actually connects a punch to anyone. Hmm. I like that the club just has the big words dance, dance. Dance, <laughs> dance. We're falling apart to halftime. Dance, dance. Because, you know, that's what, you know, guys in their, what, 40s at the time writing this would be like, what would the kids put on their uh, their dance <laughs> building? They yeah. love dancing. Dance. <laughs> so, yeah, and this is great where Terry just was like, okay, you know, they came after me. They didn't come after Batman. They knew me. And then when he realizes, wait, Bruce should be home. Mm-hmm. He's got go, this where like, does he go? Yeah, where does he go? He doesn't have any friends. <laughs> He's got this like almost Akira esque bike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, the, the the him on the bike is very Akira. I'm surprised they didn't stick the slide in there. Yeah. And then uh, this is one of the big differences between the edited and the unedited versions, or and we'll get there in a second. Yeah. So I like that when he's in when he gets into Wayne Manor here, Aww. there's a very strong purple color palette because like mm -hmm. the Joker has invaded Wayne Manor. Mm -hmm. So you see it in the lights, you see it in the carpet, you see it on the walls. There's just purple everywhere. Yeah, right here in the edited version, the Haas are purple instead of red because I guess they thought people would think that the Joker smeared blood everywhere. Oh, interesting. I don't remember that. And that's creepy as hell. Oh, it's so creepy. I also, I, 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 whenever something like this happens in a movie or a comic, I'm like, I want to, I want the scene of the Joker with the paint, just meticulously <laughs> painting every inch, just taking like an hour, watch. being like, how many more haws should I do? Like ten more haws? Is that enough? Like, Is that overkill? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Was that over the top? I can never tell. <laughs> But the yeah, only poor, poor old Bruce, man. I know. But what, what I also like about this story point, aside from it being scary and like they're no longer safe because the Joker immediately went to the Batcave, I like mm -hmm. that it takes Bruce off the table. So now Terry really does have to deal with this on his own. For sure. Yeah, and 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 it's it's not an instant recovery. He's not okay again as soon as he takes the toxin. It's he's still, you know, like you said, out of commission. Mm -hmm. Like who else is there? Yeah, we yeah, no he friends. burned all his bridges. So yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, we don't see it in the series, but in the comic, which I highly recommend to anyone who's interested in checking it out, we do get to see Dick Grayson in the future in the comic. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He's super cool. You mean like the current comic? Well, the formerly current comic, yeah. Okay, got it. Because they canceled like the, the, it again. The recent comic. I, let me say mm-hmm. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, never, they went, never got it. Yeah, they're really good, and um, they went full Snake Plissken with Dick. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jordan Price. That's it. Jordan Price. There you go. Mr. Wayne's house boy. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you implying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say, like, all right, Mark. We need you to say this line as smarmy as possible. Got it. Yeah. But here, yeah, confirmation, the Joker, as far as anyone knows, the Joker is dead. That includes Bruce and Barbara. So what's Mm -hmm. going on? And now we're going to get into, and I believe I said this when I was on the uh, Batman Ninja episode. Because I think think at the time, I'm not sure since, but definitely at that point, I think I was the first one to say that this was my favorite Batman movie. Mm Mm-hmm. And I said that, and I still stand by the statement, that I think this entire flashback sequence is one of the best Batman scenes ever put to a screen. Mm. This entire flashback. I love it so much. I can't disagree. It's it's terrific. And, and again, so cool to really connect the dots between the animated series and Batman Beyond in a really strong way. Mm-hmm. Because they definitely did have connections in other episodes of the show, but they were never so direct and deliberate as this one. Right. Yeah. Can I just say it's so much darker for Joker to harm this actual little kid? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Actual child. Versus versus Jason. I mean, I know he is still, you know, a kid, but this kid is like real young. Yeah, he's a kid. Yeah. Which, which again, they acknowledge where it's like, this is this is the line that you cross. This is too far. Yeah. This girl looks like uh, Black Canary. I thought that yeah, too. Yeah, she does. Yeah. And it's funny, in the edited version, they, they changed uh, one of those two characters to make one a boy and one a girl. Oh. Because, yeah. Uh, <laughs> to imply they were not mm-hmm. women of the night. Of the evening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or... Or as uh, Mike from Red Letter Media puts it, to prove a case of the not gays. Mm. Yeah. Uh, standards oh. and practices. <laughs> Which, you know, yeah. to be fair, even for the unedited version, they let them get away with a lot for this. Sure. True. Oh, yeah, it's it's very dark. Um, I mean, in a good way, like a, like a good kind of dark. Like it's... Okay. Yeah, it's not it's Strong not edgy story, or like, you know, for the sake of it, it serves a purpose in the story. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. And again, just the animation in this flashback is just so clean. It's so well done. Absolutely. And they also use this flashback to I, I, to really meld the styles of the original animated series and then the new adventures. <laughs> Yeah, because I was just going to say, is this basically the best these designs have ever looked? Um, For the Joker, I would say yes. And even Harley. Um, I still like, you know, I still like Batman in the blue with the yellow oval, so I still prefer that to this. I mean, when they started using these designs. Oh, sure. Yes, absolutely. You're right. Yes. The New Adventures designs, but in this animation, this looks even better than they did in the New Adventures. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. And I guess things are just so bad that even Arkham is, like, not operational anymore. Yeah, yeah they just said, screw it, and built another one. Yeah. <laughs> and th- this is big vibes from that scene in uh, Mask of the Phantasm with the, mm-hmm. the happy home. Right. Deep down, Joker just wants to, you know, just have his little nuclear family. Yeah, he just wants a little domestication, that's all. Right. <laughs> Love that he just shoves Harley out of the way. <laughs> the hand raise, not yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's great. 
I feel like that. And yeah, this Joker, I love the look of the Joker here because yeah. they really took the best of the two designs and melded them into one great design. He's he's thin and, you know, just like he was in the New Adventures, but they kept, you know, they re-added the red lips and gave him his eyes back. From he the, has a uh, face. <laughs> yeah. So like it's he, he looks so great here. I love it. <laughs> Rather than go through all the joy of childbirth, I hear that. <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> and like, you always have a few spare kids hanging around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, it's so dark. Yeah. Well, and again, like they had Tim Drake for, like, it's implied a few weeks, um, and instead of killing him they found something even worse to do, which is like, yeah. so Joker, like killing, oh, killing a kid, like, psh, that's boring. Mm -hmm. Like, it is, it's going to do, it's going to do far more damage to Batman if I turn this kid into me than it would be to just kill him. And it's yeah. like a weird, dark commentary on Robin, like taking these little kids and programming them to fight crime. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's like the other side of that same coin. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we won't kill him. We'll just super mega traumatize him. Yeah, yeah. And then I, and I love that she whispers his name to him. It's me, Barbara. It just makes me think of Batman and Robin, though. <laughs> oh, oh boy, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, it's a nice touch where she says she's like Robin, Robin, and then when she realizes Harley can't hear, she goes Tim, like. Yeah. And again, that was uh, that was Batman flying through glass, which is something they normally couldn't do in the show. Oh. I never they even didn't want realized kids to that. run and jump through glass, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Andy, have you ever seen that picture that Bruce Tim did where it was like the seven things you can't do on uh, kids TV in one no. picture? No. Oh, I'll, ha I'll have to send it to you. Bruce Tim did it. It's just like a picture of Batman jumping through a window, strangling the Joker while he's got a cigarette in his mouth and a gun in his hand, and like uh, all like basically everything that they wouldn't let them do. Wow. wow. Yeah, I have to check that out. That's interesting. I also like the moment here where Barbara kind of acknowledges that Harley is not the Joker. Harley's not as bad as the Joker. Where she goes, Harley, how could you? How could you let him do this? Like, yeah, you know, they still expect more of Harley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some ownership there. Come on, step yeah. in. <laughs> My God, I'm, I'm sorry. This this animation just blows me away. It's just so beautiful. I know, especially in the rain with the thunder and everything. Yeah, the rain and again, like the movement and it's just so it's just really well done. Yeah, there's just such a huge difference between like newer, you know, you see like a lot of almost like flash style animation. Mm -hmm. But when you've got all those frames and, you know, all that yeah. artistry, it makes a big difference. Absolutely. And what a what a Disney villain death right here, falling off a yeah. cliff oh. in the, the black abyss. Yeah. Yep. Like, oh, no. Fall into your death. It's the uh, it's the no guilt way of killing a bad guy. <laughs> she slipped. <laughs> And cut, apparently cut. they were going to leave it that way. Like in the script, it was like, no, like that's that was Harley's death. But Paul Dini was like, no, I'm not killing Harley. And so it was his <laughs> idea to bring her back at the end because it's his Harley. Absolutely. And yeah, like you yeah. said, went from, went from the guilt free death to in a few minutes, the 100 percent guilt death. <laughs> right. Yeah. What was he doing with the plunger? <laughs> I know. I, that's such a Joker thing to do. Yeah, I mean, even this is is really great. The the film. Mm -hmm. It's um, a it's a it's that great combination of like kitsch and twisted. Yeah. Yeah, it's messed up, man. <laughs> like, it is. Yeah. It's really disturbing, <laughs> and and like like you said, is because this is the the younger Tim Drake Robin. It makes it that much worse. Yeah, they are straight up torturing a child. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And then when he said, like, he tells him all his secrets, you know, that's kind of dark, too. Because I feel like in the past when we've seen him hurt a Robin, you know, Robin stays, you know, brave to the end. But this is like a child, so he just kind of told him everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which sets up another good reason for him to die, because now he knows everything about Batman. Right. 
another great 3D camera shot. Yeah. And I, I've always loved this line from the Joker. If it w- if it wasn't so pathetic, it'd be funny. I'll laugh anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we even get a little blood there on the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. I mess him up. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he he tumbles like crazy, like he flips over like five times. Yeah, it feels different, right? Like the blood and mm-hmm. everything. It's like he's really hurting him this time. Yeah. yeah. And the light, that lighting in the projector booth was so good. And it's Just, appropriate because you know if if the Joker ever fi- found found out, it's like it, it, that's got to be it, man. He's got to go one way or the other. You can't continue with that. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. We get a nice stab. Yeah, he's got his little knife. I've always, I always like it when the Joker has like a a tiny little knife. (laughs) (laughs) And you're right. We've got the this gun again. And so, Uh really, because you know we said the gun at the beginning, the Joker used this same gun, and we're seeing it again now. Like, the answer is right in front of us, and. I still didn't figure it out, you know, the first time I saw this. And he's like, ah, oh, Tim. I know, it's so sad. Yeah. And when Tim, like, he's laughing but crying, it's, oh, it's, it's so, so tragic. <laughs> yeah, it's so sad. And then he kills him. And he's shocked. I like that he's shocked. It wasn't, like, part of his plan. Right. <laughs> And it's so great that, you know, at least at this point anyway, that those are the Joker's last words. That's not funny. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. And I don't know his name, but props to Tim's voice actor for, uh, for, you know, doing that whole laugh cry thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. But like, what a visual. Yeah. Oh, actually, I just checked the Amazon X-ray. Apparently, that's Andrea Romano when he's the laughing boy. Oh, wow. Mm. I never knew that. Thank you, Amazon. Nice. Is it worth them stealing all my information? I don't know. Uh, it totally <laughs> is. But I also, I mean, I also think it's it's kind of perfect that even though, you know, that was what she says, you know, the Joker's last act of cruelty tainted us all. So even though... The Joker lost. He was still able to essentially mess up the three of them for life. Yeah. Yeah, they broke up for good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah, maybe these kids being Robin, not not such a great idea after that last one. You could see why he'd yeah. ask him not to do it anymore. But that's the beauty of Robin. There's always just another one waiting in the wings. <laughs> this is true. This is true. The wings, haha. Yeah. <laughs> another bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's always Tim another child ready for endangerment. That's right. There's always <laughs> a few extra deal. kids hanging around. That's what the Joker <laughs> says. <laughs> I like that we've got Dean Stockwell for our, uh, t- older Tim Drake. Of mm-hmm. quantum leap fame, I like At least too that's that he I always think of. He doesn't look like the Joker, right? So that's another thing that like throws us off for quite a bit of the story. And I like that he doesn't just look like an older version of that little boy. You know when they yeah. do that sometimes in cartoons, they're like, "Here's an older that little boy," but he like actually looks different when he's like middle age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. To yeah, they, they, they didn't just like stretch his model up and add gray <laughs> yeah. hair. Yeah. And because you know he hasn't been a superhero since then either, so he's not gonna, he's not gonna be like you know uh, Sylvester Stallone or something, you know. Yeah, he just yeah. looks like a, a normal, a normal like a dad, guy. Dad. Yeah, yeah, he reminded me of like, like how like Burt Ward looked like as an adult, you know. That's a good point, actually. I did and like also the moment the- where. He he knew Batman was there. Where he's like, "Listen, I haven't been a, I haven't been doing that for a long time, but it doesn't go away. I know you're there." <laughs> I was just, I was just gonna say that's such a great scene, and especially when Terry has camouflage. Right. <laughs> Were you all that bitter? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> look up Nightwing someday. I, I want to yeah. see that. I want to see that scene. <laughs> Apparently, they did plan another one of these, but I guess this one didn't sell as well as they wanted it to, so we never mm. got it, which is a shame. I know. It sucks. Yeah, which is so crazy to, to think, because the show was a big deal. This movie... Everyone likes it, even people who don't like the show, like Jamie and Brendan, like still like this movie. It's just it's weird to think it didn't sell all that well. Mm-hmm. So we're back with Red Herring hanging out with Dee Dee. Mm-hmm. The same and hair again, and everything. <laughs> yeah, it's a little a uh, little uh, risque there. Yeah, yeah, a little thigh action. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she missed the boat. <laughs> That's okay. She should count her lucky stars. Seriously. Yeah, right. <laughs> she, she dodged a bullet in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> he gets seasick. Mm-hmm. I also he like totally, that, he that totally the, puked in that fucking bucket. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say I like that that this this guy Price or whatever uh, the red herring even like they didn't just drop him he still factors into the story they still resolve that thread um, even though he's not the Joker so I like that he was not innocent he's still part of it but he's not the actual Joker like we all probably thought he was going to be. Mm-hmm. The only more dangerous position to be in one of these little crony bad guys yeah, <laughs> that are yeah. kind of at the top, but not really. So you got to go. Do you feel in charge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, when it's, when it's time to cut all the loose ends, you're the first uh, loose end. Mm-hmm. So I said these, you know, professional criminals tend to not have happy retirements. So it's yeah, just it's, not, <laughs> not a great it's business. Very mobster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> What's the expression? Uh, fear old men in a position where, uh, where, where in a in a position where they die young, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here you've got another like Akira sort of aesthetic with this explosion with the ship. Oh yeah, this this whole thing with the satellite is very anime. Yeah. And again, the lighting—it's so yeah, good. <laughs> I like that Batman's flying away with uh with this dude on his back. Like <laughs> you should yeah. be carrying him like Lois Lane and we could have a little <laughs> can you read my mind moment. <laughs> There's some surfing, kinda, sorta. <laughs> well the wipeout part at least. Yeah, the beam, the satellite beam, it reminds me of was, uh, yeah. The Simpsons, where it was like the whole ozone layer was chasing Millhouse around. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought of. I was like, I'm not as scared of it, because I could just see Millhouse going, ah, let me in, let me in. <laughs> and it's it, se- it seems like this, I mean, the entire series and the whole movie, but like, it really makes me, because I've wanted it for years, they need to make an Arkham game in the Batman Beyond universe, it fits so perfectly. I feel like I'm in a better frame of mind watching this now than I think when Batman Beyond came out, it was a little like elitist, like, oh, this isn't Batman. Mm. But now there's been so many versions and I've read so many different comics that I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Like, and, and, and watching this movie, it definitely makes me a lot more interested. Well, that's good. I mean, that's how it was with the Batman is like when it came out, I was like, oh, what is this? This is not what I want. And I didn't give it a chance for like 10 years. And then I finally did. And you just kind of have to go, oh, this is just it's just different. And go with it. I I did the same thing with Brave and the Bold. And when I finally watched it later, I'm like, I was a fool. This is amazing. Yeah. So what did we all learn? (laughs) Be open minded, (laughs) open hearts and minds for new Batman. Yes, right. Because when you close your heart, you close your <laughs> your mind. That man with the man in the mirror. Okay, anyway. Can podcasts get DMCA'd? Maybe. <laughs> we'll find out. Hey, how come only Robin was destroyed? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, I mean, that they're actually... All, they're all pretty destroyed. I, <laughs> yeah. This is a bit of a stretch where I'm like, they're all kind of messed up. It's just mm. the most messed up. <laughs> Exactly. Do you guys know about the uh, yellow symbol bat suit in Batman Beyond? This kind of reminded me of it. Mm-mm. 
Uh-uh. In one in one of the episodes, um, when you see the case behind and it shows uh, Bruce's original Beyond costume before Terry took it, mm-hmm. it's uh, it has a yellow symbol on it, and it's become like this big fan conspiracy thing. When you know the reality is just the animation studio just put the wrong color in, mm. but it's it's become like this in joke of like the yellow Beyond costume, oh, and like wow. a couple of fan projects have even snuck it in there, like it was a secret costume that Bruce didn't use yet. And I just always found that funny. Interesting. <laughs> so when they get to the bottom of this and they pull up all the components and he's like, put them together, see what they make. Um, that's like <laughs> right from Heart of Ice. Yeah. That, like it's the yep. same exact moment from Heart of Ice when he's like, oh, pull up everything that's been stolen. What does it make? An ice cannon. And this is like, what does it make? A satellite blocker or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, That's you want right. to take the pupper. Ace. Mm-hmm. I, I'm telling you, Ace gets so much play in this, which I love. This this is like the coolest Ace. Wow, Ace is great. And I remember the first time I saw this, because you all know I'm a huge Tim Drake fan. He's my favorite. So I was like, don't make Tim Drake the bad guy. Come on. <laughs> and they, it's interesting because they do, but they don't, which is was was probably say, a good he- way to go. He's technically not. <laughs> yeah, not really. Ooh, hologram. Again, you're in the future. Mm, so futuristic. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we have those now. Yeah, I mean, Kim Kardashian's birthday present this year. Oh, God, that was so creepy. <laughs> yeah. So weird. Don't don't resurrect your 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 dead loved ones. <laughs> Uh, Lisa, I'm sure you've seen Full Metal, Full Metal Alchemist. You know it doesn't end mm-hmm. well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a good idea. And that's a very uh, Justice League looking satellite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do like that his plan still it still amounts to just like mass destruction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I, it's like you said earlier, like they had to, you know, up up the ante to make it a movie and not yeah, just bring in the yeah. Joker. But his plan is like the biggest it's ever been. Right. He's basically going to nuke the city. Again, these little, we keep saying it, but it's like anime style little cannons. <laughs> mm-hmm. like yeah. Ghost of the Shellish almost, yeah. Well, and I mean, and I, that makes sense why... Especially yeah. you, Kevin, love this show so much because it's like <laughs> yeah. Batman and with a strong anime influence, like two things that you love a lot brought yeah. together. And like especially when you peanut butter. Yeah, exactly. Especially when you consider the time that it came out in like the early 2000s when anime was really just starting to kick off in America. Like Dragon Ball Z was in the full swing of things. Toonami was like getting the biggest it ever was. So it was the perfect time for it. Mm. And it plays into the plot of the show because, I mean, a lot of really popular anime for, like, decades was inspired by Blade Runner. Like, the biggest shows, you know, were mm. uh, <laughs> took on that aesthetic, so it makes sense that it would work for this show. Yeah. And, of course, Glenn Murakami is, you know, well-known for being an anime fan. Mm. Abandoned candy pack, yeah. just his style. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm surprised the address wasn't like one two three Hamill Street. Yeah. Oh, I like this too, where he's like, "You ratted me out. I didn't get to have my moment." Yeah, Papa. Uh, and when he says <laughs> "Papa Spang," <laughs> that's like cringy. That's that's the famous panel from one of the early. Ba- I want to say it's Batman number oh, one, really? where Batman says that to Catwoman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, really? he, okay. and he literally says it like I the first time I ever saw that panel, I was like, that's got to be fake. Someone made that up. Nope. I have the comic. It's in there. Oh my yeah, it's, it's hilarious. It's like <laughs> it's like the uh, Joker's boner panel. Yeah. <laughs> so here it is. It's Millhouse outrunning the, <laughs> the ocean yeah. player. Millhouse. And like. And like they are just blowing buildings up like like man they are not even pretending anymore. I love it. It's like yeah. Power Rangers level of destruction. You're right, man. Just like let's let's not let's not make any bones about this. A lot of people died just now. <laughs> right. 
As long as you show people jumping out of the way, you exactly. can blow up They're as much fine. crap as They're you fine. want. Yep. Those They're buildings fine. were totally evacuated. <laughs> yep. And I like that we see a little crack in the Joker's armor right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go, Terry, go. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ace is probably sitting at the bottom like, holy crap, <laughs> flying around like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do I do now? That cannon. Oh, and, and see, now you know it's a Batman movie because the Batmobile gets destroyed. Right, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's got to happen. There was the big gala earlier. Has to happen in every Batman movie. Batmobile yeah, is destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that. I'm like, man, in his 80s, he's still going to these parties. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. There just wasn't a charity ball. That was the only thing they were missing. Well, it was close <laughs> enough. <laughs> I, I love Ace versus Wolf. You know? <laughs> it's yeah. so good. It's like, you're just a fake animal. That's right. Poser. <laughs> You're just jealous because I'm a real animal. Oh, great. <laughs> great back punch to Ghoul. Mm -hmm. I don't yep, like the way they're taken out, though. It's lame. <laughs> <Can't> <laughs> <admit that. laughs> I know it's and probably it all, just because you don't want to see them get really hurt because they're like young and hot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah. And you can't and you can't have him punching on them. So, yeah, that would be dark. Yeah. And it also begs the question, why doesn't he do that more often? <laughs> yeah, just knock their heads together. It's easy. Here's some marbles. <laughs> a little Home Alone action. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin McAllister versus Terry McGinnis. Who wins? Kevin has prep time. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Takes out the gang. In to get some candy. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a nice way to show like the the fact that he got rid of them so easily. It's like it's time for the final boss. Oh, totally. Yeah. And that that machine thing is so creepy. Like people worked there forty years mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. <laughs> they all became like the here. Jokers. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> What's cool about this is like if you, you the video that happened just a few minutes ago where the Joker was taunting Terry, like he was standing in front of that table with all that stuff on it. Yeah, he started to sweat. He turned off the video. Now it's Tim there, you know, mm -hmm. so it all adds up. Kid stuff and he's kind of in like a kid setting. Ugh, it's creepy. I don't know. <laughs> and all the toys on the table. Yeah, yeah. it's weird. I'm a crazy fang teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tim. He's he's dealing with some stuff. This yeah. sort of reminds me of like that uh Joker um graphic novel that in the like Scott Snyder run, <laughs> you know, that has all those dark stories about Joker, like torturing people and like, mm -hmm. you know, just scaring oh, yeah. them without even being there. Oh so like, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. Well, those little balls again, like bad oysters. Yeah. yeah. That was such, <laughs> such an interesting <laughs> comparison. Analogy. <laughs> yeah. You know, like bad oysters. Oh, we've all been there. <laughs> all, all the 10 year olds watch are going to be like, Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> So, yeah, I think it was this where I was like, oh, no, it's Tim. Tim's bad. But, you know, again, they kind of they managed to have it both ways. Mm -hmm. And then this scene, holy crap. I mean, and what I love about this is, it's you know, it's very Jekyll and Hyde, mm -hmm. which is, which is oh, a really cool way to do the Joker. Yeah, it's, it's a very universal monster transformation. I love it. Yes, yeah, yeah that's a good point. And, like, they make it look like it hurts, too. Yeah. Yeah. Although, when he transforms, like, all that middle-aged flab gets sucked in somewhere. Yeah, I know. Maybe <laughs> being the Joker's not so bad. <laughs> I know. Like, we, we need to figure this out. Like, yeah. more, more of the sucking in the flab, less of the psychosis. 
<laughs> this puckish exterior. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like they really cranked up, uh, like, the, the oy vey with Joker in this version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it's kind of similar technology to what happened to Terry, right? Because didn't, like, Batman put his DNA in him somehow or something? Like, wh what's the story with Terry? Um, Batman <laughs> didn't. It was it was uh, Waller. Okay, yeah. okay. But, I do but still, it's been a while yeah. since I've watched Epilogue, um, uh. which is where they reveal all that. But it's, I mean, I think it's, I don't know if it's the same technology, but it's a kind of a similar idea. Oh, okay, kind of, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the Check uh, children for microchips, guys. Exactly. What Waller <laughs> did was more genetic than this was more electronic. Right. I see. I yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. And I and I love that that thing that he threw on him basically like short circuited his entire suit. Mm hmm. Like, of course that's a that's a rocket. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> <laughs> And, and I also like that they keep it with, like, that flat animation style. Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. look like it should move. Mm -hmm. Like, right here with the satellite. Yeah. Oh, and I, yeah, and... Now he's taunting Terry with uh, different targets. Where his girlfriend, mm -hmm. his family, or Wayne Manor. That would be he's, another trope if the main winner, main went, uh, Wayne Manor, man, <laughs> uh, went up in flames. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> Can hobble to safety. <laughs> I love that he calls it stately Wayne Manor. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, we are not screwing around here, folks. He's got to put a little pizzazz on it. Yeah, I always like the animated version of the Joker because he's always got like a little bit of fun, like no matter how evil he is. Yeah. It's like it's, silly. It's a, it's a great like balance that. of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't lean too one way or the other. Yeah, it makes it, it keeps you liking him, I think. Yeah, he's really fun to watch. And then he, Ace coming in for the save again. Yeah. Are his teeth made out of adamantium or something? <laughs> yes. yes a joy are. buzzer. Uh oh. Oh. Ace. <laughs> Man, kids, kids, and dogs get See? it in this show, in this yeah. movie. They do this not mess true. around. I love the Joker calls him Snoopy. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, wait, can they legally make that joke? <laughs> you can say Snoopy. <laughs> Then the machine goes haywire because, of course, it does. I, I love this when the Joker's just like, ah, oh, you wrecked everything. See you around. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> like, ah, oh, this isn't fun now. Yeah, he's not interested in fighting or anything. He's like, ah, well, that's it for this plan. We'll do it again soon. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't take Terry seriously at all. Yeah. And because he's in Tim's body, he's probably, you know, got some of that training osmosis into him so he, he can actually fight a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the middle-aged spare tire turned into muscle. <laughs> I love this. If it's a whoop and you're wanting, <laughs> the way he gets yeah. ready to, to beat him up. I know, like, put him up, put him up. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he stays a little retro, like, no matter yeah. what. Again, I love that line. <laughs> like, the, this entire fight scene, especially a little later on, just encapula encapsulates Terry so perfectly. Yeah. and Which is why, why I love him. Well, and, 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 and that's really the fun of it, is, like, the Joker thinks he knows who he's up against because he's fought Batman a hundred times, but he's never fought this Batman. And so right. they really use this fight as an opportunity to go... Yeah, Terry's not Bruce, and Bruce isn't Terry, and so it's a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the same thing where he just said, wait, what are you doing? Fighting dirty. He goes, Batman doesn't do that. He goes, 
I do. <laughs> and you always want to see someone not be Batman and just, you know, give it to him. <laughs> like, yeah. like I yeah. want to see someone punish the Joker. You know, <laughs> it's uh, I, I love when uh, when heroes do the I call it the John McClane thing where they just straight up make fun of the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like how he says you don't need a degree to figure you out. It's like you're not that complicated, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it is great because the Joker's so used to everyone being afraid of him, including, yeah. him, you know, that he doesn't know how to react to Terry, who's like, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not afraid of you. Like, mm-hmm. he kind of takes the upper hand psychologically, and that's just enough to throw well, the Joker off. Yeah, I think Joker's biggest, like, Achilles heel is his narcissism. So it's like, if you can make him feel small. Yeah, you know? exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, and he just can't handle it. Yeah. He's like, I make the jokes. No one makes the jokes at me. <laughs> Rodeo clown. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I feel like it's what some like young like uh, fan of something would say about the Joker if they were just trying to like blow off the character, you know? Mm-hmm. Like that's a YouTube comment right there. Uh. So Terry is the uh, is the YouTube troll. Oh <laughs> no! Hand. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, Terry's <laughs> totally on Reddit. We know it. And he just unmasks him. I like that too. Mm-hmm. Still and never straight been clear up, on how that mask works. True. <laughs> and straight <laughs> up strangles him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was Which just, is dark. That something like, they were yeah, not supposed to do, right? Yeah, that's that's one of the things. Like straight yeah. up choking him out. Ah, oh, your own joy buzzer yeah. against you. And I like that the microchip had a little smiley on yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And I do think that like the microchip, the DNA, that that explanation for how the Joker returns, it was unique. It was original. It was something mm-hmm. none of us, I think, really thought of. And there's just enough logic and science that you go, okay, I'll buy it, even if they don't have to work out exactly how it worked. You know, I think it, they found just the right balance of that. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of like when they explain something in Star Trek and they kind of hand wave it a little bit. It's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like no babble. The, you get yeah. it. <laughs> the, the concept is sound. Just go with it. You know. And it's like comic booky, you know, like it's sure. it's a grand plot. It's like a James Bondish plot, you know. Yeah. For, oh yeah, for sure. And again, and for that transformation, totally worth it. Yes. Definitely. Which I've only appreciated more, you know, over the years. And again, even these explosions, man, like they, they look, look great. So cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're so cool, so well animated. I keep forgetting to say this reminds me a lot, just the animation style and some of the aesthetic of um, Little Nemo. Have you guys seen that movie? Oh, yeah. I love that yeah. movie. I watched it all the time I when I was a kid. So much. Me too. And I think it's the same studio, but it like definitely, it must have come out around close to the same time. I don't remember when that came out, mm-hmm. but I loved it. Yeah, the explosions really stand out. I remember like, about the time I watched this, I watched Sub-Zero again for the first time in like mm-hmm. literally years. And I remember how well the explosions and the fire stuck out and the tanker at the end. Yeah. I love that she looks like Granny from like the Looney Tunes cartoons. Yes. (laughs) Tweety Bird's Granny. And again, another change they made to the edited version, they changed her outfit to like red, black, and white because apparently they thought people wouldn't get that. Oh, interesting. I don't remember that at all. Wow. Wow. And it makes and then it makes you go, well, who did Harley marry? Who did she have kids with? Like <laughs> Yeah, hopefully they're not Joker's kids. Right. They like, try like, Well, think my about life it. is ruined completely, but hi everyone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> my wife left me, I lost the house. Yeah. No one will go let me go near a satellite ever again. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Or candy factories. Yeah. I do like that. Um, I like that, you know, Tim gives Terry the stamp of approval and, and Terry saying, you know, that means a lot from you, I think is really nice. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice touch. And then right here, I think, is such a great scene. Oh, absolutely. 
It took you long enough, Bruce, but you finally got there. They work hard for those little nuggets of appreciation from Bruce every once in a while. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, and I, you can't do it all the time because then. Oh yeah. This resonates that much stronger because it oh, doesn't happen sure. all the time. I, and it's, it's such a nice moment. What a great scene between the two of them. And yeah. I love that, that Bruce is back to spend time with his, his family. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's Batman. He can't be like, I love you kids so much. Right. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you gotta earn it. <laughs> and right back to these um, these really great 3D camera shots they keep using. Yeah. And off Terry goes to take on the return of the penguin. Oh, God. <laughs> he injected his DNA into a penguin egg. <laughs> no, and it's now, literally just a, just a cybernetic penguin. Yeah. This ending music, y'all. I know you can't hear it right now, but another, mm-hmm. you know, time capsule moment. Oh yeah, for sure. I was surprised Terry Gar was in this. I, I guess she was his mom. Yeah, and she, yep. was his, yeah. she was his mom for the whole show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you have it. 20 years of Batman yeah. Beyond Return of the Joker. So being new to the movie, Lisa, why don't you give us some overall closing thoughts as the credits play out? OK, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, you know, this is one of those movies that's constantly hyped in the Batman world of fans, and I think it lived up to it. Uh, it made me more interested in Batman Beyond and uh, I don't know. I just I, I loved it. It was dark enough and, you know, but a warm hearted ending. I don't know. It just had all the right ingredients of a good Batman movie. So really enjoyed it. Good. I'm so glad to hear it. It would have been really awkward if you were like, I hate <laughs> that it. That was garbage. Thanks for inviting, <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Kevin, I mean, I already know you loved it. But yeah, why don't you give us some closing thoughts as well? Yeah, it's like, you know, I've seen this movie, uh, I don't even know how many times, between the edited and the unedited version, because I watched the edited version mostly when I was younger. But, like, 20 years, and to piggyback off what Lisa said, it just, it still holds up so well. The animation's great, the character work's great, and there's just elements that are so iconic in this movie that still carry on in other Batman media to this day. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. 20 years in, I am I think it's only gotten better. I think that I'm impressed with how well it, it holds up. Um, I mean, I mentioned it multiple times as we watched it, but man, like, I just was so impressed by the quality of the animation throughout. It's, it's really just beautiful to behold. And I think it's a great story. I think it's a great Joker story. It's a great Terry McGinnis story. You know, this could almost serve as a, a finale of sorts for the Terry and Bruce relationship where at the note that they ended on, you know, it's exciting. It's, 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 it's really great. It's dark. It's scary. It's fun. Um, I think that, you know, I like Batman Beyond, but I think that this movie is the best of Batman Beyond. I think this is probably one of the best things to come out of that version of Batman because, yeah, it's just a great Batman movie. So I'm glad that, yeah, most people seem to agree. It is certainly well thought of, and I agree. I think it's a terrific movie. I definitely agree that it's the high point of this series. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So... Very cool. 20 years. Happy 20 years. Return of the Joker uh, was super fun revisiting it for this because, yeah, it, again, it had been a while. It's easy to get distracted and I don't always remember or think to go back. So it's nice when we have these anniversaries. It allows us to to go back and revisit some of these really nice things. So, yeah, great movie and glad that history uh, chose the PG-13 cut over the edited cut because, like I said, I think that the edited cut after the initial re- release just sort of went away. Kind of like the special edition of E.T., where you just don't see it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I still have my VHS copy of it, and I actually have the, uh, for people who don't know, a VHS is, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have the, uh, the cover slip signed by uh, Kevin Conroy and Wilfred L. Oh, awesome. That's excellent. 
All right, guys. Well, thank you guys for listening for joining us. Hopefully you watched along. If not, hopefully it, <laughs> you know the movie well enough you were able to follow along in your mind because I know a lot of you guys do that. Uh, but we're not going to do the Wayne Manor mailbox this time. Uh, we'll do that next time. We have a Christmas episode coming up as another request from some of our listeners going, hey, I missed the Christmas episodes. So we got that coming soon as the holiday inches ever closer. But we took a little Christmas break to revisit Return of the Joker. Uh, but I got to thank both Kevin and Lisa for taking the time to join me. Uh, so, Kevin, thank you very much for joining. Uh, please tell our Bat family where they can keep up, keep up with you. Yes, thank you so much for having me on again. I had a blast. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter at Level3XFactor. That's with the number three. And I am also a freelance games journalist. And you can find all of my previews, interviews, articles, guides, etc. at PCInvasion.com and DailyEsports.gg. All right. Wonderful. And Lisa... Thank you as well. I was so glad to finally have you back on the show. Please tell everyone where they can find you. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is super fun. I loved talking about this movie and appreciate being back. And you can find me on Twitter at ILTM Podcast, also on Instagram. I love that movie podcast. And, of course, the uh, the podcast itself. Pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts, just search I love that movie. I love that movie. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> That reminds me, I should also plug my own show, duh. <laughs> you can also check out the Throwing the Controller podcast, where me and some friends talk about video games, and you can also find that in pretty much all of the podcast places. All right. It's a good name. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It's apt. Been there. Um, <laughs> All right, very cool. Uh, and Lisa, I think you just did Gremlins. Is that correct? We did. Yeah, yeah. me and Jared from the Nerd Knighted Nations podcast talked about Gremlins. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're in our Christmas swing, also. So, Heck yeah, <laughs> tis the season. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, right. Lisa, I, if you ever, uh, if you ever do any anime movies, hit me up. Definitely, we've done a couple, and would love to have you. Absolutely. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, everybody go check out uh, all the great work that Kevin and Lisa are doing out there. Um, if you are in the Christmassy mood and you can't wait for the Holy Batcast Christmas episode, we got tons of Christmas stuff over on the Real Fans feed. Um, recently, we did an interview with uh, Carrie K. Heim, who played Cornelia in Santa Claus the Movie. So if you oh. love that movie, that was really fun. Me and Brendan talked to her. And then an hour before we recorded this episode, I published our Christmas commercial episode. Nice. So if you want to get nostalgic <laughs> about Christmas commercials, check that out. That's Real Fans Real Movies 201. Um, there's, of course, Disorder, every Disney film, and then there's also Why Not Futurama. All those shows are at rf4rm.com, or you just search for them by name. But if you listen to this, you probably already know all the other shows I do, and thank you if you do listen to those. Uh, but thank you for downloading this show and for joining us on this celebration. Please do subscribe to Holy Batcast so you never miss an episode. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Visit HolyBatcast.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, Holy Batcast. If you've got a message for the Wayne Manor mailbox, which we will get around to answering, you can send those to HolyBatcast at RF4RM.com. But that'll do it. On behalf of Kevin and Lisa, I've been Andy. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Or I could just say Papa Spank. <laughs> That's stupid to my brain now. <laughs> Papa Spank, famous Batman line. It's real. Holy Batcast is brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. Remember, the thoughts and opinions shared by the participants are theirs and theirs alone, and do not represent the companies or organizations they happen to work for. You know, kids, a lot has changed while your old Uncle Joker's been away. New Gotham, new rules, even a new Batman. But now I'm tanned, I'm rested, 
And I'm ready to give this old town a wedgie again.